understand that it is spirit and it is life. And the Bible talks about the Word of God being rooted and grounded in our hearts. And if we're going to have that done, we're going to have to keep the Word of God in front of us. Now, Paul is talking. He's sharing the Word of God. He's letting us know. He says, may blessings, praise, and uh, eulogy be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual. Everybody say, God has blessed me with every spiritual blessing. He's already done that. So I used to come out of my driveway over there and I would say, Lord, bless my daughter today and bless so and so. Then I'd stop. I said, Lord, you've already blessed her. So, Lord, I thank you that you have blessed my daughter with every spiritual blessing. Look at somebody and say, the Lord's blessed you with every spiritual blessing. Go ahead. Okay. Now receive it. Now, I want to say something here. If you don't know you're blessed, you're going to miss the whole nine yards. I'm going to say that again. I can see I better talk to this side over here. If you don't know you're blessed, you're not going to enjoy what you have. Now, that's very important because I see people that are blessed with so much Susan and me have ministered to people that have money. They have everything. They have a car. They have two cars. They have a boat. They have a house. They have everything you could imagine, and they are miserable. Preach it, Bob. Oh, okay, since you insist. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. In fact, if you don't have a house, you're blessed. Think of what you're going to miss. You don't have to pay insurance on the house. You don't have to uh, keep up with the repairs on the house. Uh, you don't have to cut the grass around the house. Uh, you don't have to have the termite people come out and treat your house. You're blessed. How many is healthy? How many is half healthy? Praise God for that. <laughs> Hello, girls. Now, that's precious, isn't it? That is so special. We can give the invitation and go home. But I want you to see something. If you don't see you're blessed, you're going to miss the blessing. I am blessed to have a, a, a wife that's 80 years old that runs around the house like she's 19. And I said, boy, if I could be 20 again, boy, could we have a good time together. <laughs> I can't believe that Susan's 80 years old. And I'm 39. It seemed like it's just like that. But I'm blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. You are blessed. You are blessed. We've been blessed with every spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I am blessed. I am blessed. Everybody say, I am blessed. I am blessed. Now, follow me now. I'm going to get this church moving. I am blessed. I am, blessed. I am, saved. I am saved. I'm sanctified. I'm saved. I've been set apart to God. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm, healed. I'm, healed. I'm, healed. I'm, blessed. I'm blessed. I've been blessed I've been. by God Almighty. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm, blessed. I'm blessed to be breathing. I'm blessed to have children. I, I am blessed to have a daddy and mama. I am blessed. I am blessed to have a grandmama. I am blessed to have a preacher. I'm blessed to have a church building. I am blessed to have a car. Come on, now we're going to get moving. I'm blessed to have air condition. I am blessed to have a heater. I am blessed to have shoes on my feet. I am blessed to have hair on my head. Nobody laughed now. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed I got a refrigerator. I am blessed I got stuff in the refrigerator. I'm blessed I got a comfortable chair at home. I'm blessed I got a bed to lay in. I'm blessed to have toothpaste. I'm blessed to have a toothbrush. I'm blessed to have teeth. 
I'm, hallelujah, I'm blessed to have teeth to eat. I'm blessed to have uh, ears to hear. What are you saying, Sonny? I am blessed to have people to interpret to me when I can't hear them. I am blessed. I am blessed. Oh, God, we are blessed. Now, keep that in your mind. Now, if you don't think you are blessed, we will take up a collection and send you to, let's see, where's the hottest spot on the earth? Australia's hot. But we'll send you, well, let's let you just go to North Korea for about a year. And what you come back, if you do make it, and come back, and all you'll be able to say when I say, well, how you doing? You will say, I'm blessed. I said, did, 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 did you have a good time? I'm blessed now. You will know you are blessed when you live under that dictator over there in North Carolina. North Carolina? How did I get that in, how did I get that in my message in North Korea? I am blessed. I am blessed when I die, I'm going to heaven. I'm blessed, I won't see hell. I'm blessed, Christ came to save me. I am blessed, I am blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. I am blessed down here with food in my refrigerator. I am blessed, blessed, blessed. Oh God, we are blessed. Bob, you sound like you're driving it in. You got it. Sometimes it just has to be driven in. Say, I ain't got no problems. You know why you ain't got no problems? Because you remind the Scriptures. You cast all your problems upon the Lord. Oh, I can see some of you haven't done that. That's why you think you're not blessed. We're going to take care of that right now. Put out your hands. The Bible says, cast all your cares upon Pastor Bob. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Cast all your cares upon Frank Butler. Cast all your cares upon Michelle Daughter. Cast all your cares upon Rick. Let's give Willie a break. He's getting operated on tomorrow. We won't cast anything on him. <laughs> no, cast all your care. Hey, spell all. Thank you. All upon who? Upon Jesus. On the count three, are you ready? Cast all your cares upon everybody on the back seat. That'll teach you from sitting back there. All right. <laughs> Cast all your cares upon the Lord. One, two, go. Three. Woo! Thank you, Lord. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Next verse. Verse four. Even as in his love, his love, he chose us. Do you know why you're saved? He chose you to be saved. Aren't you glad you responded to him and said yes? Someone says, well, I don't want to be saved. Stay lost and be miserable. But look what it says. Even as in his love, he, God chose us, actually picked us out for himself as his own. Now let that sink in. We don't belong to ourselves, we belong to him. And let me tell you something about God. God is able to take care of his own. I said God is able to take care of his own. Everybody say, I belong, I belong. to God. I made him my Lord and Savior. I do not look at the things that are seen. For the things that see are seen are temporary. That Cadillac you're driving is temporary. We have an inheritance in heaven kept for us. That the IRS cannot bother. Nothing can touch it. It's kept for us. By God himself. So we are blessed. The best thing in the world that could happen to any child of God is die. <laughs> it's awful quiet in here. You're going to do it. You might as well face it. Why go through all this trouble of living for the next 40 years? Some folks say. 
I think we're off of the amens. <laughs> what did Paul say? I'll tell you what Paul said. To die is miserable. Huh? Gain to die. How can he say that? Because he went to the third heaven. He saw his castle up there. He saw the place that Jesus Christ prepared for him up there. He saw heaven and all of his glory. He felt the full power of the anointing. The presence of God fills heaven. And you walk into heaven. You walk into the very presence of God Almighty. And now that you're born again down here, you see death in a totally different way. For Christ conquered death. Listen to me, I'm quoting scriptures to you. He nullified death. You will never die. I said, you will never die. That's one of the blessings. Oh, your body will quit breathing. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> That's where we have our problem, the old body. No, these bodies will quit breathing one day, but you will live throughout eternity. You will never experience death. The only thing you and me as a Christian will experience is that your spirit will just come right out of your body. I've, 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 I've listened to testimonies of people on the operating table, and, and they died, and they, they went up like this, and they could see the doctor. They could see people in the waiting room. They seen everything down there. And they went to heaven. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. I love it. I love it. To die is gain? Woo! To God, to die is gain for us. That's part of those blessings. In fact, let's just do that right now. Why don't we just all right now take a trip to heaven? How many wants to go with me? Oh, that's a few folk in here. Let's just do that in our imagination. I, you know, some of you, I can tell you, want to eat more ice cream and cake before you go. I understand that. You'll get sick of that after a while too, right? Fried chicken, maybe not. See, I'm trying to blow the bubble of the human mentality of thinking that this is all there is down here. This is not all. If it is, I'm ready to go now. <laughs> this is just a little speck of our life. As a Christian, we will live throughout eternities of 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 eternities, of eternities, of eternity. How you doing, Scott? Of eternities, of eternities, of eternities, eternities, of etern eternities, 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 eternities. We'll live it throughout eternities, of eternity, eternities, eternity, eternities, eternities, eternities. Everybody got eternities, eternities. Why? Listen, don't get so caught up with this stuff down here. But live like God wants us to live. Let's glorify Him. We ain't got much time to glorify Him down here. But let's give it all we got. Because this ain't our home. Our citizenship is in heaven. What verse is that? Philippians chapter 3 verse 20 and 21. Put it on the board. Philippians 3, 20, 21. We, for, but we are citizens of the state, the commonwealth, homeland, which is in heaven. Now, some of you didn't know that, did you? Woo! I love it. And from it also we earnestly and patiently await the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ the Messiah as Savior. Let's go to the next verse. Where is our homeland? 
in heaven. We're only down here for a little while. Verse 21, who will, when Christ comes, what will he do? He will transform and fashion a new. Now remember, our spirit has already been regenerated, born again by the Spirit of God. But now, when he comes at the rapture, that's the, that's the uh, resurrection, he will transform and fashion anew the body of our humiliation to conform to and be like the body of his glory and majesty by exerting that power which enabled him even to subject everything to himself. So we will have a body just like Jesus Christ. When you study the scriptures and you will see that and when Christ was in his resurrected body, he could eat, he could appear uh, in a room. Remember the disciples were in the room, the door was locked, and somebody knocked on the door. No, nobody knocked on the door. All of a sudden, Jesus appeared in the room in his glorified body. He was not a ghost. He says, touch me, touch me. One time he, uh, he said to them, you got a piece of bread, you got a piece of fish, let me have it and I'll eat it. He was not a ghost. He had flesh, but he didn't have blood. Remember that, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. This is why you need to get rid of this body down here. Are you listening? This is why this body will not inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These bodies are not built for heaven. They're built for down here for just a little while. And they are wearing out quick. There, she, there you go. Anybody else cold? You're cold. I'll preach on hell over here a while to get you. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody get our sister, our, our son there. Well, you got you. Okay. We don't want you cold. This is one of the reasons we're going to leave these bodies down here. We do not want to carry that germ of Adam with us. That will finish it once and for all, and we will have a glorified body just like Jesus Christ. We can eat, so cook the cakes there, Mrs. Campbell. Cook the fried chicken, girls. Ah, it's going to be wonderful. No aches, no pains, no fears, no doubts, no, just in the presence of God, being able to explore the universe. God has great things for us. You know, scientists are finding all of these galaxies out here. Yeah, those were made for us, you know. Oh, yeah. You, you think God is a party pooper? And he's got so much planned for us. In fact, the Bible says we're going to rule and reign with him. I'm going to say that again. Y'all not listening. God says we're going to rule and reign with him. Wow. He's going to share. I want you to see something. We were adopted into the family of God. Notice this. We are heirs of God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. Catch that. Hold that. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. In other words, we were adopted into the family of God. We have become sons and daughters of God. Therefore, everything God has in His will is for us, His children, and everything that belongs to Jesus belongs to us. Oh, I, I, am I getting through? <coughs> one of the reasons, one of the reasons that Christ, God had to adopt us into his family where we could inherit the blessings. You, you see, there was a will made. We understand a covenant, uh, a will, a covenant. When you go back and you read about some missionaries, how many ever listened to a member uh, Livingston? Livingston was a missionary. How many remember him? Livingston. 
Livingston was over in Africa. He was a missionary to Africa. And this was way back in the 1800s. And somebody said, you know, you need to make a covenant with some of these tribes, with some of these uh, chiefs. And he said, make a covenant? What, what good would that do? He says, I'll tell you. So what they did, they went to this one group of people, had a chief. He had a lot of people. He had a big army. He was a strong chief. <clears throat> And his God, Livingston, God said, now, you need to make a covenant with him. And I'll tell you why. So anyway, he sets it up with the chief, and, he, and he's going to make a covenant. And so in a covenant, uh, you've got to give a gift, and then you've got to shed some blood. So they would do it in different ways they would do it. They would cut their hands. Uh, the chief would, and Livingston would cut his. Or Livingston may have a substitute for him, like Christ is our substitute. They cut the covenant for us. So Livingston, who was a missionary, cut the covenant. Uh, his uh, his uh, substitute did. And mingled his blood with the chief and then let somebody go drop into a, a cup of wine or something like that. And they would both drink it and make covenant. And so what happened was you have to share a, a gift. So uh, Livingston had uh, a lot of stumble trouble at that particular time, and he had a goat. They say goat meat, uh, uh, goat meat, goat uh, milk would take care of that little sour stumble. So he had to give up. He's okay. So he had to give up his goat to the chief, and the chief gave him his spear. What do I need a spear for? I'm not a warrior. I'm a missionary. But here's what he found. When he went out and he would come up into another village, the people in that village would recognize the spear that belonged to that chief that had many warriors, and they actually bowed to Livingston. When they, and there he was. He said, wow, this spear is powerful. Symbolically, it was showing the, uh, the authority and the power of that chief of that tribe that he made a covenant with. Now, Jesus Christ made a covenant for us. He's our substitute. Now, I'm going to back up a little bit. Who can I pick? All right. Here's a, here's a woman and here's a man. Let's say my dad and mom, my dad and mom. Okay, they're in heaven now. I'm born into their family. And of course, the years go by, they make a will out. And in the will says that I get everything they own. They pass away. Now, the will only comes in force when the person that makes it dies, then the will is in force. See, Jesus Christ died to activate and ratify that covenant, that will. But he had to get us in the family because we were outside of the family. We were lost. We were undone. Satan was our father. And so God begins to move by his spirit we hear the gospel, we respond to the gospel, we accept Christ, who is our substitute, who made the will for us, and God adopted us into his family. Now everything that will says that we will get, we will get it, not because we're goody-goody, but because God swore by his own name, which is the highest name in the universe, that we would get it. Because of what he did and not what we've done or didn't do. But we have to be in his family. Say, I'm glad I'm in the family of God. See, this thing is bigger than people realize. It's more than just having our sins. Yes, praise God. All right, now, let's just say that there's the will. God made the will. Christ died. He was our substitute. And let's say we have two Christian people, which, which are both Christians, but one seems to stumble a lot and fall and sins more than the other. 
but they, they both die. Now, the one that, that seemed like could never get it together, and it, he made his life miserable because he couldn't get it together, but he dies. Remember, but he's born again. He stands before God, and God's going to say, Now, I know uh, our, our works will be judged. I know that. I, I know about the judgment seat of Christ. I know all about that. But I also know about the promises that are in the will. And so we stand there and say, okay, the guy that didn't do too good, he will still get his reward. He will get his inheritance. Now, I know our minds are just going ape right now. And the guy that did real good, he will get his reward. He will get his inheritance. Now, let's bring it down to your family. Let's say you've got ten kids. <laughs> yes, you do. You and Floyd got ten kids. Five of them are real good, five of them are sort of bad. But you make out your will. But you love them all. So the bad ones will get just as much as the good ones. Is that not true? How many see that? Huh? Do you see that? Because of God's grace and love. But my goodness, have we, the ten that messed up so much, and a lot of times they didn't mean to, but they just didn't know, seem to know how to walk in God. But when the will is set, written down, nothing can change it. Nothing can change that will. See, that's the universal law. Do we understand there's a universal law? God has to move and operate within the boundaries of his own law. Now, he's God, and I don't understand it all. There's nothing that he can't do, but there are certain things that he won't do because he has sworn in an oath. Remember, he swore in an oath. Now, let's take God's kids. All of us are at different levels of growth. Some of us are more mature than others. But that doesn't mean God loves the more mature more than the others that are not mature yet. Can we understand that? You're trying, I know. <laughs> we have to try to understand that. But see, that's God's love. In fact, I've read somewhere, who, the, who is it that loves God the most? I hear the sawdust turning. The gears are turning. Somebody tell me. If you know, you don't have, I'm gonna, I don't want you to answer. If you know the answer, they just raise your hand. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. In fact, the one that sins the most and has been forgiven the most loves the most. Now, don't jump out of the church and go out and sin a whole bunch. <laughs> but when we're in our ignorance and we've sinned, and all of us sinned a whole lot, has nothing to do. In fact, you can love God more deeper because you know what you have been forgiven. Are you out there, church? You know. Remember, there was two prodigal sons, the one that stayed home and the one that left home, they were both prodigal. You've read the story, the, a the attitude of that oldest son. Now, I know I'm supposed to be polite, but I'll, I'll be polite. It stunk. Is that not true? What a stinking attitude that that oldest son had. Has anybody in here ever had that attitude? Yeah, be honest. And there you have the Pharisee. Father, I'm thank you. I am so not like that republic that public Republican. <laughs> Some of you didn't laugh. I said Republican. Okay, Publican. I pay my tithes. I pay my tithes on my donuts. I 
I pay my tithes on everything. I am so glad I'm not like that publican over there. And what did the publican do? He took out his submachine gun. No, he beat on his chest and said, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Now, there's a time and place for that. Now, we want to move from that to understand what the Lord has done. He's blessed us with all spiritual blessings. I was once lost, but now I'm found. I used to identify with the first Adam, but now I, de- I identify with the last Adam, Jesus Christ. I am free from sin. I am free to love God. I belong to Him. God has done so much in our lives. Glory to God. God is good. See, you've got to move along the way here and understand how God looks at us now. We are now adopted into his family. We belong to him. And every father has the responsibility to take care of his kids. And God is well able to do far beyond anything we may ask, think, hope for, or desire according to the power that works in us. I got news for all of us. We don't have any problems. Now, you can have all the problems that you want. <laughs> I'm going to pass this by you. How many have many seen the, the, the motion picture of passion? The passion. When, that, when I was watching that, I wanted to get up and grab that guy that was beat, that beating Jesus. Remember how they was beating Jesus? I wanted to get up and take that whip around, away from him, and beat him up. And God said, no, Bob, he's in my will. He's doing what he needs to do to bring salvation to humanity. Anybody listening? See, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. So there had to be the shedding of blood, but there had to be somebody that caused that blood to be shed. And that was that Roman soldier. Bob, he's doing my will, afflicting my son. And the Bible says in Isaiah 53, and it pleased the Lord. It pleased the Lord for his son to be whipped and beaten for you and for me. And I said, Lord, I see it. I see it. All those people that said, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him, was in the will of God. Without the death of the one that wrote the will, the will could not have been ratified and put into motion. The person that wrote the will had to die before the will could be, word, what's the word I want? Implemented. implemented. Very good. Implemented. You see, we have to change our thinking about a lot of things. I remember Tammy. That's one of my youngest daughters. She's 52 years old now. Has two kids and a husband. I'm striking that. I got to strike that thought. I started to say she, she had three kids. But I wouldn't want to say that at church. But there's some truth to that sometimes, isn't it? And vice versa. Let's move on, Bob. Okay. Since you insist. Wow. God loved you and me.
so much to send his only begotten son. But see, God knew what the future was. Except that green, not green, that seed, that acorn, fall in the ground and die, it abides alone. Do you know why we are here today? Because God took his only seed that he had, his son, and planted it in the earth. And we are the fruit of that one seed. And in your life, in my life, How much fruit are we bearing by dying to our own selves that others may live? And Paul put it this way, always bearing, about, uh, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that also that the life of Christ might be manifested in our mortal bodies that we can pass on to others. See, we don't understand God's ways. Isaiah 55 tells us that. They did not understand God's ways. And they went about trying to establish their own righteousness, not knowing in this very fact, when we die to the self-life, we begin to live by the life of another. Come on, don't shout me down. And if you don't understand it, just hold steady. Because ultimately, if you're going to enjoy the presence of God, there's something in all of us that has to die. That resurrection life. Notice what Paul said. That the resurrected life of Christ might be manifested in our glorified bodies. No. In our what? Mortal bodies. These bodies right here. Bob at 81 years old. What, where's this life coming from? Out of death. You don't know how you guys have killed me. And thank you. Because I'm enjoying his life. Now, our human mind is like, no way. You think I'm going to give my neighbor a break? He throw trash over in my yard? I'm ordering a dump load full of trash to put in his yard. I'm getting five dogs, and I'm going to send them over to his yard. Fertilize his garden. I'll do unto others before they get a chance to do it unto me. Come on, that's, our, that's the human element. Come on, church, love me. Love me just a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Like, that's true. I told my son-in-law, you take that last piece of chicken off that plate, you are going to get it. I've been practicing my karate punches. Hiya! Hiya! I told Susan, I didn't mean to stick the fork in his hand, but he reached for my piece of chicken. Come on now, that's it. See, you got to see yourself in the message. Say, I want to see myself in the message. But on the other hand, thank God we are free. We are free. We are free. Now, some folks aren't quite free, and that's why they need me to get them set free. But most of us are free because we prefer our brothers and sisters over our own selves. Why, us that are married, I prefer Susan over myself. Those that are married, you always prefer your mate over yourself. My wife's goodness 
has brought me to deep repentance. You know who cuts my hair? My dog. And he died, and Susan has to do it now. Of course, I'm just kidding. No, Susan cuts my hair. She has a hole in the backyard, and she puts me down and measures my head. She cranks up my rotting lawnmower, and she, ride, and she does a, do you think she does a good job? She cuts my hair every Friday night. She irons my clothes. You think I look good? Shirt, everything's washed, clean, everything is laid out on the bed. My hanky, my ring, she makes sure that I want, she wants me to wear my ring. I don't know why. Why does she want to wear my ring? <laughs> you guys, you know, you know I'm married, and besides that, who would want me at my age, you know? <sighs> but she lays it all out there on the bed. <laughs> oh, Susan. I, see, I got that from Frank. <laughs> Don't beat me no more, honey. <laughs> now, I don't expect you sisters to do that. I'm just sharing our experience. There must be some secret why we've been married 60 years. Take notes. Honey, that's me. Yes, dear. Would you take the trash out? Oh, yes, darling. Five minutes goes by. Of course, I got, I'm busy, you know, uh, reading or studying. I do a lot of studying in my house. And all of a sudden, I hear the door open, and, and this bag of trash hits the uh, ground out there, and the door is shut. I know that's a signal. See, I'm getting smart. <laughs> uh, I, I, I hear the bag, boom, and so I get up, and I go out, to pick the trash up, and put it in the trash can, and I come back in the house, but I've learned to try to take the trash can out before it gets too full. Y'all proud of me. I help Susan make the bed up in the morning. Because she knows if she does it, I'll get back in bed. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But it is tempting, I tell you that. But we learn to do things and to love one another and respect one another. She'll look at me and cry. And she said, Bobby... That's me, Bobby. I love you. <laughs> I love you too, honey. <laughs> she cries and I cry. Seriously. How many wives in here would love to hear your husband say, I love you every day? Let me see your hands. All right, keep them up. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. How many in here would like to have a man in the house that loved you and you were married? There's one back there. All right, we got any prospects? That's anybody, any men single in here? We got a prospect back there. That's right. Keep it in the family, you know. Don't marry those outside the group. Marry them within the family of God. That's, that's scripture. And that doesn't cost us men anything. I love that. I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, love you, love you. It ain't cost me a dollar. <laughs> I love you, love you, love you. <laughs> Women love for you to whisper in their ear. Do you want three pork chops or four? <laughs> I'll take four. Let me try that again. I love you. Do you want one piece of cake or five? <laughs> Did Justine make the cake? 
Yeah. I'll take 10. Folks, it's so easy to walk in the Spirit. We are so blessed. When you walk out this place today, has everybody got money in their pocket? Has everybody got a pocket? Everybody got money? Okay. How many's got a car? Or how many's got gas in the car? How many's got oil in the car? Now, you don't know where it goes, but it's in there somewhere. <laughs> my grandkids have not learned yet where the oil goes. Every week I go to my granddaughter. She's 35 years old. I check her oil, and it is always a quart low. I can close my eyes so that I can pour it in. Don't have to do that. Just every week I do that, and it's on Grandpa. But you see, death works in me. That life might work in her. And you say nothing about it. You consider yourself so blessed to ride five miles or ten miles out of your way to check your granddaughter's oil and come back and pick Susan up at the beauty parlor. And she comes out of that beauty parlor Is that my wife? <laughs> She's coming out of that beauty parlor. <laughs> right to my car. <laughs> I jump out of the car and I open the door. She gets in. Boom! I shut the door. <laughs> Just kidding. You don't have to muster it up. It's God. God. God in the beginning, in Genesis. God in Revelation 22. He will be with His people. You will see Him face to face. You will live with God Almighty throughout eternities of eternities. He will be with you. You will be with Him. And there will be no more of this garbage that we have to put up with down here that's how God loves us. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. And because He loves me, I keep His commandments. Because I love Him, I keep His commandments. But if I fail, He has made a way in the covenant. If I simply confess that sin, God is faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me from half righteousness, from all unrighteousness. Wow. And you're clean right now. You can't get no more cleaner than you are right now. Now I want to say one more thing and you can put it on the board. i got five more minutes. Hey, <laughs> hey. Corinthians chapter 10. I'm sorry. Acts chapter 10. <laughs> oh man, this is powerful. Let's start with verse 9. Let's start with verse 9. Acts chapter 10, verse 9. <sighs> the next day, as they were still on their way, now we're talking about Cornelius' house. Cornelius was a Roman... Uh, high-ranking soldier, and an angel appeared to him. Remember that? And this was, uh, he was Gentile, and his whole family was about to get saved. And the angel appeared to him and said, send some people to Jabba, and you'll find a man there named Peter. And that's where the story goes. And the next day, as they were on their way, that was the men that uh, Cornelius was sending to find Peter, and were approaching the town, Peter went up to the roof of the house to pray. 
about the sixth hour, which was noon. But he became, next verse, Robert, there you go. But he became very hungry and wanted something to eat. <laughs> well, that's us preachers, you know that. <laughs> okay, let's move on. <laughs> and while the meal was being prepared, a trance came over him. That is over Peter. Look at it, the next verse. And he saw the sky open as something like a sh great sheet lowered by the four corners descending to the earth. Or can you see that in your imagination? Next verse. It contained all kinds of yeah, coral pets, whatever that is. Well, I know what it is. It's what, three, isn't it? Three or four? What is it? Anyway, you know, four. Four, thank you. Little ministry, body ministry there. And wild beasts and creeping things of the earth and birds of the air. Next verse, verse 13. And there came a voice to him, and that voice was God Almighty, saying, Rise up, Peter, kill and eat. Next verse. But Peter said, No, by no means, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common and unhallowed or celebrated. Yeah, that's good, Bob. An unclean. <clears throat> I know what the word is, but I don't have time to pronounce it. And the voice came to him. Now that's God speaking to Peter again a second time. What God has cleansed, and some of you need, may need to repent after this, do not you defile and profane by regarding and calling common, unhallowed, or unclean. Ooh, let's leave that on the board. Woo! How many understand that? Be honest. How many does not understand that? Let's try that again. How many understands that verse of Scripture? All right. How many do not understand it? All right. One, two. Okay. God had to deal with Peter. Peter had a Jewish mentality, and that is, if you weren't a Jew, if you were a Gentile, you were unclean and defiled. If you study the Scriptures, you understand that. That's the way the Jews perceived the Gentiles. And God had to change his mind, and he did this by this sheet, lowering this sheet and all those uh, filthy things that the Jews thought was Dirty and all that not to eat. And Peter did, never did that because he was a Jew. But those animals, those unclean animals, represented the Gentiles. And by the way, that's you and me, Gentiles. Either you were a Jew or you were a Gentile. Okay? So all of those unclean animals represented the Gentiles that God has cleansed. And he used this trance and this vision to let Peter know that the Gentiles are not unclean because he's going to save them and sanctify them and they're going to become his children. In fact, the Jew, when you read on there, Paul's writing, the Jew and the Gentile have become one man. The wall of petition has been torn down. And there's no more Jew or Gentile, no more male or female, but we're all in Christ. We understand that? And so God had to deal with Peter's mentality, his Jewish mentality. Now, here's where we come in. Why would we call ourselves unclean and unhallowed that God has cleansed? Now, think about that. Has God cleansed you? Now, be honest, and I'm going to be honest. That was a hard place for me to get through because I considered myself so unclean, so unrighteous, and about every preacher that preached seemed to accentuate that because they were preaching on this side of the cross and not on the justifying side of the cross. They were preaching what Adam did for us, but they didn't preach what Christ did for us. Are, are, are you following me? Now, I know today we have to preach both sides because there are people that are on that side and we have to let them know their condition. But once they pass through the cross and receive what God has done, they're now clean and they're not to be called unclean or uncommon or hollow anymore. 
Now bring that down to your own life. How many of you, now that you've been a Christian for years, and you still consider yourself unclean? A lot of times. Come on, raise your hand. None of you do? All right, some, some. Be honest, be honest. And you feel, you might, maybe you don't call yourself, but you feel it. You feel you're not as good. You feel that you're un. No, you not. You are holy. You are sanctified. You are, you've been clean. That's the work that God has done for us. And if we reject that, there is no hope. Yeah, but you don't know what I did. I don't want to know what you did. I know what Christ did. And if you've been born again, God had to rebuke Peter, who was an apostle, for calling what God has cleansed and sanctified unclean and defiled. Are you listening? That's what that scripture is. Now, the voice came to him. That voice was God Almighty. Again, a second time. What God has cleansed and pronounced clean. Everybody say, God, God. has pronounced me pronounced clean. clean. Just accept it. Meditate on it. Thank Him. Praise Him. Now, here's the thing. Do not anymore defile and profane that which God has cleansed common and unhollow or unclean anymore. How many, am I getting through? That's the main, am I getting through? You will find a new power in your life like you've never seen before. You will find and be, know that you are so accepted in God it will cause you to bloom. If you're a rose bush, you will bloom the most beautiful rose flowers in the world. If you are whatever, I'm telling you, you when we accept what the Lord has done, He's done it. We got to receive it. We got to proclaim it. We got to confess it. We got to let people know that we're brand new people. Listen, your spirit wasn't overhauled, and God put a new motor in your spirit. He gave you a brand new spirit. Brand new. Born again. Recreated by the power of God. Now these bodies will be taken care of later on. But in the meantime, God has invested Himself into us. And he has got, if we let Him, He'll guide us and direct us. He's given us His Word. And I encourage you to get into the Word of God and read and study Yes, you got to do dishes, you got to cook, you got to go to work. But I tell you what, I always carried my little Bible with me. When I worked, I carried that Bible with me. They had, out, out at the air base, they had 15 minutes smoke breaks. Now, when I used to smoke, I took care, I did that. But when I quit smoking, I took my little Bible, and I set some down, and I read the Word of God. Over and over and over and over, over and over. Well, I've read that before. I'll well, read it again. Over. When God makes it alive. Oh, let me tell you something. Woo! The power of God. Woo! The victory. Woo! Energy that you never knew you had before. And you can say with Paul, it is no more I that liveth, but it is Christ that liveth within me. Yet I live by the life of another, by the faith of another who loved me and gave himself for me. When I found out that God loves me, I said, God, I'm your man. I'm your man. Sold out 100% to God. I belong to Him and everything I have belongs to Him. And Susan and me have proven that because we had a nice brick home. It was paid for and we sold it all. And came out here to boondocks <laughs> and cleared this land with the help of Frank and Linda and other people to get all this built. But it was God working in a man, making a man and a woman and many others willing to die to self that you might live. That's the Spirit of Christ. In Philippians chapter 2, read it. 
let us have the same mind that he had. Even though he was God, he left the throne, came down here, took, the, took on the form of, of a man. Whew, what a Savior we have. Listen, we've got the victory. We are blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And remember, if God be for you, who can be against you? He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Be content with what you have and believe God for more if you need it. But let's just don't believe God for something just to have something when we don't really need it. I can't think of a thing. In fact, Christmas time's coming. The kids say, Dad, what kid do we get you? And I say, nothing. Please don't give me another tie. <laughs> I mean, he's got plenty of ties. If you don't, I'll give you some. <laughs> I got 60 years of people giving me ties. The candy's gone. I have a tendency to eat that, but I don't like to eat ties. <laughs> Are you free today? Are you justified? Yeah. Are you sanctified? Yeah. When you die, where are you going? Yeah. Who's your heavenly father? God. Who's your savior? Jesus. I've been blessed, I'm blessed. with all spiritual blessings, all spiritual blessings. By, God by God Almighty. Woo! Stand to your feet. Bless somebody. If you need prayer, come up. If you're